A battle without winners is how one U.S. military source described the fight against the Taliban. Some American commanders admit there may never be enough U.S. boots on the ground to end the insurgency. If a military victory isn't achievable, then ending the war might rely on small victories, like this one. Wakhil Ahmed Muqtawel works to translate the Quran into other languages. Before 9-11, he was the Taliban foreign minister. He now urges talk, not war. In fighting you bleed, in talks you sweat, he says. It's better to sweat. Some Taliban have come to the table for talks with the Afghan government. Others have been put on the payroll in a program supported by U.S. tax dollars. The so-called $10 Taliban are paid to put down their arms. Taliban reconciliation, do you think it's a viable option? I think it's the only option. I, I don't think that Afghanistan's going to succeed going forward unless uh, there's some political dialogue with the insurgency. You can't buy loyalty here, but you can rent it. Afghan commanders have a history of switching sides without stigma. There's even a term for it, turning your turban. Thousands have turned away from the insurgency, but the hardcore Taliban, also estimated in the thousands, will never turn. We know that there are a lot of servants and spies of America under the name of the Taliban who take the money from the enemy, he says. If we catch them, we will behead them. This former Taliban member who asked for his identity to be protected wants to unite the country. Interestingly, he has the same concerns about President Karzai's administration as the U.S. government. Government corruption and infighting are stopping more Taliban from switching sides, he says. Another obstacle to reconciliation could be the tens of thousands of new troops the president is sending to Afghanistan. As one Taliban fighter told us, more troops means more war. Mandy Clark, CBS News, Kabul. Laura Logan is our chief foreign affairs correspondent. Laura, I was told by a senior White House official that there are 92,000 Afghan army troops they consider combat ready, but they want to double that number in a year and a half. What shape is the Afghan army in, and is that in fact doable? It's going to be very tough, Katie, and part of the problem is that many Afghans don't even read or write, so training them, you really are starting from zero. And there aren't enough Afghan troops from the Pashtun tribe. That's one of the biggest problems. So it's, they've got a job on their hands, and with the police, it'll be even harder, Katie. And, Lara, there's a, still a war going on in Iraq with more troops there now than will be in Afghanistan following this surge. What is the status of that and the scheduled drawdown there? Well, the hope is that by next summer, uh, the U.S. will draw down to 50,000 troops and they will pull all combat troops out of Iraq by, um, by 2011, by the end of the following year. Um, that's an ambitious plan, but it seems to be on track. It's what's not being said in Iraq. It's the involvement of Iran that's really underpinning that withdrawal. And, and the consequences of that will show itself later, Katie. All right. Laura Logan from Washington. Thanks so much.